This, just telling you guys um, before the video actually starts, this is some pre-gameplay from Wolfenstein the new, from the, Wolfenstein the Old Blood, sorry about that, and it is from PAX East 2015, um, it ended, so if you guys haven't seen it, I'm just featuring it on my channel, this is not my voice, this is not my gameplay, so I'm gonna stop talking guys, and don't forget to drop a like down below, road to 750 subscribers, and peace. And guys, um, if you heard talking in the background, that's not me. You'll just hear little specs in the background because it's PAX East. I mean, um, it's a big event, and you'll hear like other other things going on back there. So don't think that's like something wrong with the video that I uploaded. This is in the original video. This is a rich file copy. So don't forget to drop a like once again and peace. It's a combination of a, of a new melee weapon. Uh, you see Matt wielding it here. Um, that gives you some opportunities to take down some of the heavier um, super soldiers that you come up against. Um, yeah. but melee climbing. Yeah, uh, but it also offers some traversal options. So yeah, you know how to use we it saw for, the climbing. Yeah, so, on, yeah. so uh, it allows you to do some more sort of exploration of gameplay space and some different um, some different uh, traversal elements that we didn't have in them. Um, yeah. And we have some uh, some new guns as well. The uh, bolt action rifle. Uh, which we'll see later, uh, the comp pistol, which is really awesome. It's basically a pocket uh, rocket launcher. Uh, we also have a new shotgun in the game. Anytime you can have a pocket rocket launcher, that's that's a good thing. And obviously for folks who like yourself who played the old Wolfenstein games, um, it's one of those things where you don't have to have played any of those, just like you yeah, don't have to play yeah. the New Order, but there's lots of little nods and, and stuff that, you know, if you're a fan of the franchise, you've been playing this now for... Uh, 20 years or whatever, you're gonna you're gonna get a lot of sort of that nostalgic effect uh, out of this and getting a stomp around Castle Wolfenstein again. And I, I mean, I really know that gamers appreciate that whether they are being uh, you know brought in into the new era uh, and playing these games, or they came from the old school. You know, having those little throwbacks and Easter eggs always. Uh, so you can always see here, Matt's taking out one of the two um, the two guys that can. Uh, can call in uh, extra reinforcements, and you can see it's uh, giving him a notification. Hit Harry. <laughs> yeah. I did mention don't oh, die, man. right? I did. Oh. Don't throw grenades at yourself, either. Um, so, yeah, I tried to go stealthy first, and I thought I was going to make it, and uh, uh, not so things, much. things didn't go well. So, there we go. And just like the other game, you have the option to do that. If you want to play a little stealthy, that's not me. That's certainly, not necessarily my style. Certainly there's parts where combat is un unavoidable. Like right, You're not just going to tiptoe your way quietly through the whole thing. Um, but there's, there's definitely opportunities where you can decide to go more stealthy or more combat. And depending on how you do that, you know, if you just want to go in guns blazing, you can. But you're, mini also, gun. you're also going to end up fighting a lot more guys. Right. Uh, they're going to they're gonna call in a lot more reinforcements and make it a lot, a lot uh, tougher to deal with. Well, looks like I got out of that okay. You did make it through. Glide. <laughs> the one guy in the area is like, nope, I have a single job. One of the things to uh, to point out is the the uh, while the the um, the new order starts kind of pre World War II when you're assaulting Death's Head compound, the majority of the game takes place in the 1960s. Right. The old order ah. takes place in the past. So this is all sort of World War II era where the the war is still going on with the Nazis and BJs trying to help uh, keep the Nazis from winning the war. So a lot of what you see is going to be a little bit more retro technology. You're going to see kind of older versions of the right. Panzer Hunts and right. the original versions of some of the super soldier technology. It's a little more sort of archaic compared to to the to the uh, to the new order, but it's because this is when the Nazis were first starting to experiment with some of this technology. Um, so your weapons and tech are going to reflect that. And that's always it's always like interesting from uh, a design perspective, right? When you go when, when you go back and you kind of you're dealing with weapons and or technology that maybe haven't been introduced to the story yet, or like you mentioned, like the timeline doesn't fit. So, is that challenging, or is it just is it kind of fun to go? Okay, how are we going to tackle this one? Yeah, I mean, I think it offers a lot of um, flexibility that you you know the designers are, are like anybody else. Like you don't want to just keep doing the same thing over and over again, and so switching to a different era like this does give you some some options. You can see here Matt using the traversal aspect we talked about, so he can kind of hold himself up. Um, with one arm as he's climbed up with the pipes, and then, you know, again, we we're talking about stealth versus combat. Use a, use a silence pistol to take out the guard. Um, but yeah, it does offer, you know, uh, designers and, uh, and the team a chance to explore some new stuff and not kind of just do the same thing, same period over and over again. What would this have looked like for, uh, for the Nazis back then? Get a little creative with it. Uh, 
Uh, go ahead. Go I ahead. was going to say, plus you get to do cool new uh, kill animations. Yeah. <laughs> Pipe down. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, kind of a staple of the Wolfenstein uh, series is sort of like the secrets and the things that you find throughout the levels. I assume that we have plenty of those littered throughout. Certainly, the certainly plenty of that again, where you're going to, as you're moving through, uh, there's going to be uh, un unlockables that you can find and uh, you, you, get, uh, you get bonuses. <laughs> Grenade in the skull. Yes. Um, bonuses for uh, c finding and collecting all that stuff. Um, but again, that's purely optional. It's kind of up to folks. If you want to just go through and run and gun and have a good time, um, it's just going to offer you hours of that. And if uh, you want to go exploring and, and find all the other stuff, that's an option as well. What, Pete, what do you, which which bucket do you fall into? Uh, I'm a run and gun guy. Okay, I, I am too. Um, there's times where I use stealth mostly when I know it's an area where if the uh, if they start calling in uh, reinforcements, I'm really going to be in trouble. So I'll, I tend to be stealthy until I take out the two guys that they call in the reinforcements, and when you take out the commanders, then I, then I know I can start running gun and not right. have to worry about dealing with a lot of extra enemies. So this is the new bolt action rifle, and I've got the attachable oh, nice. scope right here. Pretty awesome. Uh, needs a little time to reload, but uh, definitely powerful. Yeah. And obviously, as Matt's showing here. Um, Cover is still uh, an important thing uh, in Wolfenstein, um, something that I think folks got used to the more they played through the New Order, that you, right. standing out in the open, not always the best idea, so leaning from behind cover, above it, below it, from the side, um, definitely important, as, as Matt's showing here. And it is an option with any weapon that you're using, whether you've got a scope or not, that you can you can use that to your advantage and, and not take a ton of damage while you're taking guys out. Yeah, I mean, I, I noticed even the cover system's incorporated into, like, the new, uh, like, the, the climbing and yep. whatnot. When he got to the top, there was that prompt to also be able to lean. Yep. I guess we'll see it right here, right? Yeah, you're able to do that. Uh, I think there's a guy up there. Maybe. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, you can kind of go in any direction you want to uh, use cover, and there's nobody there. So that's okay. <laughs> hey, buddy. Surprise. So we were in the catacombs. That if you noticed, uh, we fell through. It looks like I'm getting my way back to where uh, where I wanted to be. And uh, just for those that are joining us, uh, we are seeing the first uh, shown gameplay here of uh, the Old Blood. We'll sign the Old Blood, and uh, this was announced on Wednesday. Um, and we're seeing this is the first time that we've ever uh, had a chance to check this out. So it's coming out in May, right? Yep, May fifth. Um, it is going to be for uh, PC, Xbox One, and PS4. So just uh, just next gen. Um, allowed the team to honestly to to focus a lot more on what they were doing um, and not have to support as many platforms, which uh, takes a, takes away a lot of dev time. Is but five platforms hard to do? Uh, <laughs> it turns out it is. Really? No. Having done that twice last year with Wolf and uh, the Evil Within, we can tell you, uh, yeah. shipping on five platforms simultaneously is a ton of work. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Boom. That's a nice grenade. So you guys, uh, and I'd, I'd love to maybe talk a little bit more about all that grenade. Um, you know, the, the concept of, you know, a, like the standalone versus DLC models. Um, because also, as the designer, publishers, you know, these are decisions you have to make, and also depending on uh, sort of the needs and demands of, of your audience as well. So can you talk to us a little bit about, sure. about taking this route? Yeah, I, I mean, I think the, the idea came from a couple of routes. Um, number one was um, it, it allowed us to, um, to act um, sort of do it all in one thing that trying to split stuff up meant every time you do one of those DLCs each one of them is a uh, is a separate certification process it's a separate process right. of wrapping it up getting everything done and then you move on to the next one and you have to do it all over again you wrap all of that stuff together that's just that many fewer times that you're having to worry about how does all this play together and what what problems do you have um, we felt like we were able to do it in a pretty quick period of time sure and that was certainly advantage if we were doing this and it wasn't coming out until November it probably would have been less likely but you know, the team worked pretty hard on putting something together that was both substantial, but that we could do in a in a quick period of time. 
Um, and then obviously, you know, it's not something we've done a lot in the past with a digital only um, release or being able to put it out digitally first. And uh, that was appealing to us. Right. To have, you know, a low barrier of entry that's only $20 that you don't have to play the previous game. So if you were interested in Wolfenstein, but, you know, didn't get it for your for your console or your PC, that we had something that was a little lower cost that, you know, you come in and you get a, you know, what we think is a pretty substantial amount of gameplay. Um, and it's 20 bucks. Um, and, uh, and you know, the reaction from the fans on Wednesday was pretty super positive. I mean, we yeah. obviously haven't done this kind of thing, but you've seen it done with other games. I think sure. uh, Far Cry saw a lot of success with uh, Blood Dragon. Right. Uh, folks like myself, I, I had a lot of fun with that. So um, uh, we felt like it was a good it was a good fit for what we were trying to do, and um, we wanted to give it a try and see what, see what folks thought. So uh, we'll see how it goes. And, I really like it. Maybe we can do more of this down the road. That's great. No, it's definitely uh, it's definitely a model that I'm a big fan of. Uh, you know, in this day and age, like you said, you know, also the the days of cloud and digital downloads, like it's it's getting more and more prominent in uh, in the gaming world. So uh, not necessarily having to have one piece of software in order to continue to enjoy the experience, I think, is also well. Just and part of it for us is it depends on what that content is. In the case sure. of, in case of Evil Within, you know it. We are doing DLC. Um, we did just do DLC, and it's uh, coming out next week. And um, it made a lot more sense to have it fit as part of it. And honestly, it was a lot more difficult to have that be standalone. In the case of Wolfenstein, um, it's just different than a game like Skyrim, for example, where you're playing, 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 and then you're adding content into your existing game. This was going to be a standalone experience anyway. So, um, you know, it, 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 uh, it doesn't fit every situation, but it seemed to fit this one. Uh, you were asking before about collectibles. Matt just there found, they are. <laughs> Matt just found some of the deep sea diving. Water. Um, yeah, so we think it's a, it's a good way to introduce it uh, to a, both a new audience and, and again for folks like yourself who really loved Wolfenstein last year, and, and we sure appreciate everybody who, who bought it and played it and supported Machine Games and, and Bethesda. Um, some, a way to give them something uh, something new to play that uh, kind of fits what they like, but new and different. So uh, tell me a little bit about uh, about just being able to write and create a story around this character, right? Like BJ is actually he well, he has a lot of clout in the whole in the gaming world just because of who he is as a character. So I imagine it's got to be a lot of fun to well, be able to you know, take one control of him. One of the interesting things when we when we did the original Wolfenstein: The New Order was it turns out even though this is a franchise that's been around for a while. Um, that BJ didn't himself didn't have much of a, a personality. Right. He was just sort of a big neck guy who shot Nazis. Right. And I think one of the things that, that the, the New Order, um, and rightfully so, got recognized for was adding a lot of character and story Absolutely. and narrative and, and giving him um, some context and, and, and uh, you know, making the choices that he was making meaningful and kind of understanding that, yeah, he kills Nazis, but it's really this guy who just wants to get back to having a normal life and a family. Right. And, and, uh, and the only way he can do it is to stop the guys who are trying to take over the world. So uh, I think it was really fun and interesting for them to do that, um, to be able to kind of put a new direction on where this franchise uh, is going to go going forward. That you know the action and the fun that uh, you know we're showing here is is obviously a big part of it. That it turns out that shooting, strangling, stabbing Nazis is still pretty fun. Um, yeah. But adding more character and story to that experience can be meaningful. Um, and I, I think it was great to see the reaction people had to all of that, to BJ and Anya and, and the other folks right. that, that uh, we had in the New Order. And, um, you know, looking forward to the team being able to explore that going forward. Because, you know, I think we, we did find at the end of the day that, you know, Wolfenstein does have a place. It, it is relevant. I think the Machine Games guys did a great job in bringing it back to relevance. And, you know, we're looking forward to down the road to, post this to seeing where those guys go, uh, where this franchise goes next. So I, I have to ask a question because I haven't seen anything about it yet, but at the end of the trailer uh, that opened up the segment, we have that part at the end where there's a shotgun and he picks up the hacksaw and he proceeds to make some modifications. Can you can you give us any inf any additional information on that or will we see anything here or um, tell me? Well, certainly if we put it in the trailer, there's got to be something going on there. We would right. would never show you it something like that wasn't in the game. The ultimate tease. Um, I, I will tell you this. Um, we're not, we're not talking a whole lot about that okay. yet, but I will tell you that there's a bit more of kind of the occult um, in uh, the Old Blood than there was in uh, the New Order. Okay. A bit of a nod to some of the previous games, like Castle Wolfenstein, where there was some more kind of occultish stuff going up, and bodies falling through the ceiling, and then being on fire and getting back right. up again. 
Um, something's obviously going on there, but uh, <laughs> what what's going on and uh, what BJ's going to have to deal with, um, we'll probably hold off talking about okay. a little bit. But you won't have to wait long. Uh, no, no, A5 not at all. will be here before you know it. Um, not at all. Okay, uh, and that was good tease. That was good. That, yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So uh, I think we're going to jump ahead. To All right, so Matt, tell us a little bit more about like where we've jumped ahead to here. Okay, so uh, we got, well, I, I was basically, I got the door open to get into Castle Wolfenstein. Um, and now we skipped all that. So now we've jumped ahead to, <laughs> I need to get the hell out of Castle Wolfenstein. Um, so I am uh, making my escape plan right now. Pull this lever. Matt, you, I, I saw too, you ended just by the skin of your teeth. You, you, there was a couple times you were down to that two, three health, I, I noticed. It was a little rough, yeah. So uh, so hopefully uh, hopefully I can survive here. A little pro tip, if you see a hole in the door, it might mean there's somebody waiting for you. Just shoot them. So that's a cover mechanic. Usually I gotta run like hell right here. Did I get him with the throwing stuff? I just called the knife a throwing star. So, Matt, what are, what's your favorite weapon? In uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really liking the, the bold action rifle when I've got the uh, scope on. Um, shotguns are always fun, and two shotguns are even more fun. And the, and the comp pistol, being able to shoot grenade rocket things from your little... Yeah, that's server. what... So that's what... That was like the pocket rocket launcher. Yep. The, yeah. I saw yeah. that in the previous uh, run. Because grenades can be pretty difficult to find. We don't put a ton of them in the level, so having a, not only um, grenades that you can throw, but also having a, a weapon that shoots them as well is, is a pretty handy one, too, when you've got, uh, you know, groups of enemies. And you'll sure. Find quite a bit in this game you're dealing with, uh, with groups of enemies. Oh. All right, this is getting hairy. I'm getting out of here. Hold the lever. So Matt's making his way onto this uh, this cable car that's going to help him uh, uh, get out of Wolfenstein. Out. You saw snippets of that as yeah. well in the uh, right. trailer, and the guys did some really great stuff, both visually and from a gameplay standpoint. Yeah, I don't, I'm not dealing with him right now. Too much. He's out, Cub Scout. <laughs> There you go. So scenic journey. Here we are. Well, I'm sure it'll be a very quiet ride. Yeah, from here, right? really, honestly, yeah. the rest of this level is like a is a really pleasant hour and a half just ride on a cable car. <laughs> actually happens. Have a cigar, just relax. <laughs> uh, the true Alp simulator here. It's like the version of Die Hard where the terrorist forgot to show up at the hotel, <laughs> hanging out, talking to his ex-wife. It's just a Christmas party. That's it, guys. Uh, almost, almost at it. So, yeah. The cable rival car. cable car. The West Side Story of the Wolfenstein. Fierce competition. So he dropped a grenade. That's helpful for me. There go. Or he's been taking grenade throwing lessons from you and just throwing them at himself. Hey. <laughs> there that there was good. that questionable grenade toss early on, but I thought Matt could have just said, well, in case they came at me, I threw sort of a defensive grenade, if you will. But <laughs> <laughs> in truth, we know that's not what he was actually of doing. Of course. <laughs> no, did we get them all? No. Hello. There's quite a few baddies on that guy. Yeah, you were, you know, we were talking before about stealth versus combat and opportunities to do that. You're, you're not stealthing your way exactly. out of this. Exactly. This, this is obviously one of those opportunities where uh, the Nazis have to die and uh, you're going to have to fight your way out. Yeah, if you duck down, they're not just going to go away. Here's another example of um, being able to use your pipe um, for, for uh, opportunities. Oh, okay. Anyway. And I, I mean, I have to say, like, uh, you know, similar to the New Order, there's a, there, I, the game, there's looked to be some unforgiving parts. Like, we're not dealing with enemies that have terrible aim. 
they're gonna they're gonna hit you. It seems like even if you are gonna be running gunning, you still have to like be it's, smart about it's, it. It's definitely uh, challenging uh, for sure. Um, we can neither confirm nor deny that Matt is getting any additional uh, artificial help on this level. <laughs> been from dying repeatedly. Um, we'll put it down to his unbelievable skill. And I'm skilled in shooters. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a tough game. Look at that. Look at that. Come on. <laughs> it's definitely a game that is uh, challenging and certainly on the, uh, as with uh, the New Order, on the tougher difficulty. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It, really, it can really be a challenge, particularly with, when you're dealing with some of these big heavies like this guy here. They are, they are not easy to take down. And that was actually one of the things I really enjoyed um, about the new order. So that's what I'm looking forward to in the old blood because I feel like it, it has that same that same feeling of, of challenge. Like there's not going to be much hand holding here. Then. Yeah, and we don't we don't want it to be too uh, too one note where it's, where it's always the same. So the way that that challenge comes across and, and the, the different types of combat challenges you have to deal with will uh, will vary from time to time. That's probably not a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> You may recognize those are uh, the fighters that you end up facing in the early part. Uh, right. BJ's assaulting uh, Death's Head's compound. Everybody's got drones. He's oh, there. these damn things. I swear to God. The oh, number wow. of time those things managed to kill me in uh, the new order. Attack from a, uh, above, side, yeah, this is, and uh, drones. This is, this is a lot right here. This is uh, chaos. One, one drone down. Got to shoot him in the leg. And they're shooting right now. It's not very good though. It's like a old GI Joe cartoon. They're all going past me right now. They are a bit far. Accuracy and length is not fantastic. Um, got them all. But that didn't go well. Uh oh. Brodsky's 